Welcome to our new video. With the deadline looming for the official end of support for the Windows 10 operating system, many users have been searching for alternatives. Linux has been suggested as an option for those with usable computers that don't meet the requirements for upgrading to Windows 11. While we wait for a new version of Ubuntu, probably the most popular Linux distribution set to be released in October, this video will take a look at two possible choices. Stay tuned! In the last few weeks, two major Linux distributions have released their new versions. Debian 13, nicknamed Trixie, and Linux Mint 22.2, codenamed Zara. Why these two? Well, Debian is considered the grandfather of many Linux distributions, the foundation upon which many popular versions are built. While Linux Mint is often touted as the most suitable operating system for those transitioning to Linux, we have tested both distributions on real hardware and in a virtual environment, and here's what we found. As for Linux Mint 22.2, if you are an experienced user, you won't find any groundbreaking changes here. The Linux Mint team has continued its policy of gradual evolution rather than revolution. The installation process remains stable and predictable, using the same installer app for years, even though Ubuntu, the distribution that Linux Mint is based on, has changed its installer application several releases ago. If you are a first-time Linux user, you'll just need to answer a few questions and create your user account, and that's it. Essentially, the installation procedure in Linux Mint is quite self-explanatory. If you have already used Linux Mint, specifically version 22.1, the upgrade process is quick and smooth with no issues. Speaking of Debian 13, we chose to download its live ISO instead of the standard installer, and then we installed the system using a popular installer app called Calamaris. Again, the installation process was easy and self-explanatory. It didn't require any advanced computer knowledge. A few minutes later, we had a fully installed system. We installed Linux Mint 22.2 while it was still in the beta phase. The Linux Mint team has introduced subtle improvements that don't dramatically change the user experience. For instance, in this new iteration of Linux Mint, the sticky notes feature now has rounded corners, and the app is compatible with Wayland, a newer display server technology. Another change is the addition of a blur effect in the panel and dialog box on the login screen. Linux Mint 22.2 also features a brand new app called Fingwit, dedicated to fingerprint authentication. Fingwit detects if your computer has a fingerprint reader and allows you to record your fingerprints. The Linux Mint team has patched the upstream libadwaiter tool, so it now works with the Linux Mint themes. We have only mentioned some of the changes. In the background, Linux Mint 22.2 features a newer Linux kernel 6.14 and is still based on Ubuntu 24.04, which is an Ubuntu long-term support release. This means Linux Mint 22.2 will receive security updates until 2029. On the other hand, Debian, a rock-solid and dependable Linux distribution in version 13, offers many improvements, both in the background and foreground. The most notable changes relate to the new iterations of available desktop environments. For this video, we chose the default GNOME desktop environment, which has also been upgraded. In Debian 13, it's GNOME version 48, not the very latest as of the time of recording, but certainly one of the newest. Additionally, Trixie features Linux kernel 6.12, again 
Not the latest and greatest, but still one of the newest kernels available. The newer version of GNOME means that the default apps that come with the desktop environment have also been updated. However, judging by user feedback in the comment sections and on social media, it's not all sunshine and rainbows when it comes to Linux Mint 22.2 and Debian 13, especially from a novice user's perspective. Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu 24.04, which itself is based on Debian 12. This means it has older versions of apps in the official repositories. Linux Mint compensates for this by allowing users to install regularly updated sandboxed apps from the FlatHub platform in the software manager. New users might not be familiar with Linux's various packaging formats and software platforms, and they may get confused when they can't find some popular apps, like proprietary web browsers in the software manager. To find those, users need to enable the option in the software manager to show unverified flatpacks, meaning apps that haven't been packaged for FlatHub by the original companies. Only then will users be able to find apps like Chrome, Vivaldi or Brave browsers. Debian 13 allows the use of certain non-free software if users need it to make their machines run Debian. This is a significant improvement compared to earlier versions of the operating system which made users jump through hoops to obtain non-free software. Despite the Debian official repositories containing nearly 70,000 software packages available for installation, some popular apps are still missing, including certain web browsers. To get those kind of apps, users need to install Flatpak support on their own by visiting the official Flatpak website and copying three commands into the terminal. But then, are novice users really comfortable dipping their toes into the command line? Linux Mint 22.2 has also brought improvements in terms of look and feel. However, some Linux users believe that Linux Mint's appearance is outdated and resembles Windows XP at best. While that may be true, the fact is that the Linux Mint team delivers what their user base wants. Regardless of opinions about Linux Mint's look and feel, it's been recommended as one of the best, if not the best, Linux distributions for people switching from Windows. As for Debian 13, the relatively new version of the GNOME desktop environment offers a modern look and feel with a workflow that resembles that of Android phones. However, if you want to implement your own changes, you'll need to have advanced knowledge of how Linux works and be willing to tinker with the desktop environment. This again raises the question of how suitable Debian is as a starting point for newcomers to Linux. All in all, Linux Mint 22.2 and Debian 13 represent further evolution of Linux on the desktop. They are both rock-stable and dependable operating systems. Whether they can serve as gateways for new users to enter the world of Linux depends on their readiness to learn and accept that Linux has never been, or will it ever be, Windows. Have you tried Linux Mint 22.2 or Debian 13? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, share it and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.